It wasn't an artistic masterpiece, but it was a very entertaining night of basketball, and the Sixers survive in advance. And if you watched it last night, and no one does this better than our buddy Legs, the Sixers really struggled against that Miami zone defense yeah. much of the night. But at the end, they found a way to make a couple of plays that decided the game. Yeah, and in general, in the second half, they were better against it. And a couple of key times in this game, they were able to get what they wanted. Starts right here. And they didn't get a lot of this, but this is so important. Take a look right here where Maxi gets this ball early. And this doesn't lead to direct offense, but what it ends up doing is set into motion a chain of events that's going to lead to something great. His penetration early forces Miami to flood back under the rim. And as a result, when this is all said and done, right there, they've got five guys below the foul line. And you're going to see when they come out of this, Greeny, um, you see where Joel Embiid is. He's at the top of the key. When the Heat come out, there's a little confusion here on who's where. Well, that leads to this. Now he's able to catch the ball where he loves it, which is the middle of the floor, right there at the top of the key. You got a, you got a mismatch right here. And take a look at Tyler Hero. He's just taking a peek, just enough. And he's going to pinch in inside that elbow just enough that it's going to lead to something great over here for Nicholas Batum. And take a look at the score. Tie game. Just enough for Hero. Great delivery by Embiid. Batum has space, huge shot, crowd reaction. It's a momentum play. Now, this one, will let, I'm going to let run for a second here at the beginning of this because the Sixers are trying to attack. I don't love their spacing at the start of this, but it gets better as we go. Now, we're going to come out. Let's reset it. You see the heat in their zone. Here's the key thing. Watch what happens on the baseline. Batum changes sides of the floor with Oubre. That's going to lead to something great in a second because it's going to force these back two line defenders to have to react. And it, it, you end up getting numbers on the weak side. Starts here. Joel Embiid catches the ball. He's obviously going to draw two in that situation. So you've got a trap going on. Well, who's over here? Nicholas Batum. This is the guy that's been killing them. This is a tie game inside 40 seconds. And what that ends up doing, you get a little bit of a lean out by Adebayo. So now on the weak side, that means there are two players back here. And unfortunately for the Heat, only one defender, Jimmy Butler. And what happens, Oubre gets this duck in because Butler's a little bit concerned about getting out to the three-point line. Right there, he takes a peek. Oubre dives in, catches the ball. Mm. It's an and one without question the biggest play in the game on a night when the Sixers did not get much high-low action against the zone, which is really important. That's one time when they did, and Oubre made them pay. So it was, a, again, an interesting night. They called it nasty. Uh, Embiid called it nasty, a nasty game afterwards, and they advanced to play the Knicks. The Heat will have to fight off Chicago on Friday night to make the playoffs. Outstanding legs. Meanwhile, show me McNutt. Monica McNutt, we've got our favorite bit here. It's called is that McNutt? Let's go to the Western Conference. Monica, if I said the Lakers are going to beat the Nuggets in round one, is that McNutt's? Respectfully, Greeny, that is McNutt's. Listen, the Lakers are playing good ball. They have the size and the experience. To me, if you look at the West, they are the most well-equipped to beat the Nuggets. But the Nuggets are that good. And when you talk about Nikola Jokic, no one has had an answer. That's not happening. All right, next stop would be Kyrie and the Mavericks. If I said Kyrie is going to make it farther in these playoffs than Kevin Durant, is that McNutt? I would like to let you behind the scenes a little bit and know that I went over this question probably about a dozen times <laughs> in my mind. I think both of these guys could be out in the first round. And so, if anything, I think that it's going to be exiting at the same time. Wow. I don't know. Like, the Clippers series, the T-Wolves, like, there's just nothing. You don't like now. Dallas against the Clippers. Wow. I, I, I know everybody's saying that's hot and sexy, but I, I think that's a lot closer than we're making it. If I said they need to break up the big three, is that McNutts? It's time to rework it. I'm going to go with this one being McNutts, only because I think the importance of their big three, and in particular, Clay Thompson, has that franchise, has that city in his heart, in his soul. If he's willing to take less, Willing to come off the bench, rework his role, understand that it's time to infuse this organization with some young blood in order to look forward to the future, I think it can be okay. They can salvage that. Well, the big question we had here yesterday all morning long was, have we seen the last of these Warriors? This dynasty, they've been one of the great teams and one of the most enjoyable to watch in NBA history. Have we seen the last of them? Stephen A. on first take said uh, yesterday, he thinks the answer is yes. This is the third time in five years they've missed the playoffs. The third time in five years. Joe Lacob ain't going to stand still. I promise you that. He is not going to stand still um, and just let these twilight years of Steph Curry's career fade into oblivion. The end of the Warriors as we know it, this isn't the end of the Warriors because they still got Steph Curry. But as we know it, as we see them presently constructed, it's a wrap. So what exactly does that mean? I mean, what, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, and like Stephen A is as connected to this stuff as anybody is, but I'm trying to figure out what that looks like because 
They've got Steph, they've got Clay, mm -hmm. they've got Draymond. If they bring Clay back and Wiggins is still there, they don't have the financial flexibility to make some huge splashy move. So what does it look like? The key phrase is as we know it. That. As we know it is mm -hmm. Splash Brothers. Clay Thompson as a starter, which that was also toyed with already this season. To me, that as we know it is over. Agreed. But it doesn't mean that you start to transition players into other roles. Klay Thompson can clearly be a guy at a reduced salary, of course, commiserate to with a role that he will be playing from now on, can still get you buckets off the bench as that guy. He's got to learn how to become that guy if he wants to stay in Golden State. So that's the as we know it. What they have to find is what they thought they found in Andrew Wiggins. I mean, this is talking about a guy that almost was MV, MV, uh, finals MVP in 2022. He played outstanding defense. He was rebounding like a monster. And they thought they found their, like the Kawhi when the Spurs had their second yeah. run. Yeah. It was like Kawhi emerged, like, okay, they gave us new life. Andrew Wiggins has not become that. They gave him $100 million, and he has regressed. So maybe they made a mistake in thinking that that was his potential when that was the aberration. They've got to find that. But it doesn't mean that they can't be effective with those three guys still a part of the team. But if I'm hearing this correctly, Legs, what you're telling me they need to find is the second best player on a championship caliber right. team. Exactly they have the first. Yep. That's Steph Curry. But finding the second best player on a championship team when you don't have unlimited resources, that's a really hard thing to do. Yeah, that's what I've been saying all along. Because everybody likes to just go say, I'll blow it up. It's just so much easier said than done be yeah. because of the dilemma that Steph Curry puts you in. That's a championship caliber player. This isn't like one of those dynasties that last 15, 20 years and then organically everybody gets old at the same time. Like it happened with San Antonio, right? That did, that's not what happened here. Steph Curry is still on that level. Draymond Green, by the way, played really well after he came back from the suspension. Some of the best basketball he's played in the last three years. Mm -hmm. He is still absolutely a winning player, a serviceable player. Klay Thompson in a different role? Absolutely. Off the bench? In 20 minutes a night as like instant offense, absolutely. The question is, what do you do to acquire what you need, which is somebody to leapfrog Draymond and Clay next they, they step. They did that when they acquired Wiggins. Right. They got him, and he was that. He helped them win a championship. The problem was it didn't last. Right. They got to try to find it again. Well, he's not going to get to that level offensively. He's taking a leap. Was, yeah, he, yeah. He, he won't be a star. Yeah. A reminder that Andrew Wiggins was once upon a time the first pick in the draft. That's so true, so it's not yes. insane to think, well, maybe he could have been that, but it hasn't gone that way, and it doesn't look like it will. Meanwhile, I know I was watching uh, or listening to Steve Kerr on a radio show yesterday defending Draymond Green and talking about and you said he played well and he did play well. But the reality is when you look back on their season and where they found themselves in a one game do or die against a, a tough Sacramento team, you know, Draymond Green had a lot to do with that this year. He's the cause and the cure for their success and failure this year. And it really is. And Wendy brought this up yesterday on the show. I was watching it. And I thought it's the perfect numbers to give you. 32 and 20 when he played in games this season. 32, 12 games over 500. This is a team that finished 10 over 500. 14 and 16 when he did not play. And so those, those games that he missed, which weren't injury, which were other reasons that we know, the question about, again, keeping this group together is not necessarily about Klay Thompson, although everybody's talking about him. I think it's more about Draymond Green. Can you put your ego aside for now? and mature enough to understand how important you still are to this team and how important you, you are to being on the court. The numbers tell that story. This is not just opinion. This is fact. When he's on the floor, they're a better team. And they all have acknowledged that, right? And so I think, again, and we touched on this a little bit yesterday, this team is probably better than a play-in team if healthy and whole for the duration of a season. But there's a gap between play it or playoff team and championship contender. And so that's what Lakeup has to kind of battle with. If his priority is getting the numbers right, then we're probably rolling it back, running it back as constructed. And, and, and the idea of Steph Curry ever playing in another jersey seems so impossible to imagine. No way. Like yeah. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, we've seen crazier things. Michael Jordan finished as a Washington Wizard. He's maybe the greatest player that ever lived. I mean, it has happened in the past. It, is is the, it never going to happen? Yeah, I know some guys are just wired differently. So he's just going to be Absolutely. there. Absolutely, yeah. he and wants it, his legacy. Is to there be a that. is there a scenario that you can see where in what whatever remains of his prime, his best, which is like two three more years, that they can get back to a championship caliber? Situation? I don't see how they acquire the player you're talking about, I, which is somebody I, yeah. that's got to jump over, you know, Pajemski and Kaminga and, and Trace Jackson Davis and Clay and Draymond. You've got to find that guy. And I just don't know how you do it with it's the assets trade. that you have. It's very possible because with the new luxury tax situation that is coming this summer, there's going to be a team that has to make a tough decision on a big contract. They do have, you just mentioned Pajemski, Kaminga, they do have 
young pieces that another team might want to get that are cheaper contracts, and there is a way you could still bring another high-end player in there. That's going to be the question. I, I think for those of us who would love to see Steph back in that spotlight one more time, it would be so good for the league, it would be so good for everybody. Is there a path to that while he's still at his best? By the way, tomorrow night we've got the final play-in night. The Bulls will take on the Heat. That'll be for the final spot in the East playoffs. Our coverage starts 7 Eastern on ESPN, and the app winner gets Boston.